Hello, my name is Toby and in this course we're going to be looking at Microsoft Access 2010, Microsoft's desktop database management system. If you've used Access before, you'll know that it's a friendly package that's really quite powerful, but there is a lot to learn and so we're going to go through it step by step. The course is divided into modules, each of which takes up to 15 minutes. Make sure you allow yourself plenty of time to follow each module carefully and in between the modules give yourself some time to practice on your own copy of Access 2010. For those of you who've used Access 2007, the changes with 2010, although they're noticeable, are not particularly major. For those of you who've used earlier versions of Access, such as 2000 or 2003, 2010 will really look quite different, so you need to allow yourself an extra bit of time to get used to those changes. We're going to start looking at Access 2010 now, so I'm going to start it by double-clicking the icon on my desktop. When we open Access, we almost always see this welcome screen. The content of this screen can be updated by Microsoft if we've given them access and permission to do so. In the centre of the screen are a number of available templates for building access databases and we're going to be looking at those in a little while. On the right of the screen is a list of recently opened databases. We haven't actually been working on any so far, so the list is just about empty. On the left hand side of the screen are a number of tabs, some of which are enabled and some of which are greyed out, which give us access to other functions of this screen. This screen is a particular view of what's called Backstage View in Microsoft Access. If you've used any of the other components of Office 2010 you'll know that they generally all have a backstage view component. When we're using Microsoft Access the commands that are available in backstage view are not necessarily ones that we'll use frequently while we're working on a database itself but they are essential for various other purposes. For example, if we want to create a new database we have a new command here which is currently highlighted. Recent gives us access to databases we've recently worked on and access gives us help to online help. Very importantly we have an options section which allows us to personalize our copy of Access 2010 and set it up in the way that suits our way of working best. We're not going to cover Backstage View in detail now. We're going to cover each of those topics as we go through the course and we'll come back to Backstage View frequently to look at those items in a lot of detail. If you've used the Office 2007 suite of programs, and particularly Access 2007, you may be wondering where the Office button is. Well, the Office button has gone. It is no longer. And for those of you who are users of earlier versions of Office or earlier versions of Access 2003 or 2000, you may be thinking that this is actually the file menu where it isn't. The File tab here gives access to an exit from Backstage View. And when I exit Backstage View, I'm presented with the ribbon which was introduced in the 2007 version of the Office suite of programs. The ribbon has a number of tabs, so here we have Home tab selected, you can tell it's selected because it's highlighted, but we have other tabs such as Create and Database Tools, and each of these tabs contains a number of buttons which correspond to commands or options that are available depending on the function we're performing at the time. Now as we'll see later on we can actually change the content of this ribbon, we can customize the ribbon to introduce other commands or move the commands around and if you look at say the create tab the buttons are arranged into groups which are logically groups 
which perform related functions. We can create our own groups and we can move the content of groups around if it makes more sense to us in the way that we use Access. So if I go back to the Home tab, there's a whole row here of groups. For instance, there's a text formatting group which contains the commands I need to set the formatting of text in terms of fonts, sizes, effects like bold and italic and so on. With all of the buttons, if we hover over a button, the function is shown to us. So for instance, that button does bold, that one does italic, and in some cases, if we hover over a button, we get a tip and in brackets after it, we're told this keyboard shortcut, in this case shift and enter. So the ribbon not only gives us access to the buttons but reminds us of keyboard shortcuts as well. Another very important feature of the Access 2010 workspace is the quick access toolbar. This is above the ribbon and it's normally in the top left hand corner and next to this quick access toolbar is a little drop down which gives access to a few commands. One of the commands is show below the ribbon which actually moves the toolbar down. Click here to put it back up again. Some people prefer it below the ribbon. I'm happy with it where it is. And it's possible to customize the quick access toolbar. I've clicked on the drop down and you can see the list of commands and you'll notice that three of them are actually checked save undo and redo and these are in fact the three commands that you can see on the quick access toolbar at the moment all three of them are currently greyed out because I haven't actually done anything yet so there's nothing to undo I'm not working on a database so there's nothing to save and because I've not done anything there's nothing to redo but I could add one of these other commands to the toolbar simply by checking it. So for instance if I wanted to enable the quick print button click there and the print button appears. It is of course um, greyed out because I haven't got anything to print at the moment but uh, that's how you add it to the quick access toolbar. The reason for the quick access toolbar is to put some of the commands you use frequently in a nice easy place so you don't even have to change tabs on the ribbon. You can just go up to the toolbar and click away on the commands that you use the most. You're not restricted to the list of commands here either. In fact you have a number of ways of adding commands that are not in this list. If we click on more commands here we bring up an access options dialog and the access options dialog gives us a list of a whole load of commands. These are what are called popular commands but if on this drop down here I click, click all commands all available commands are listed and believe me Access 2010 has a lot of commands and I can choose pretty much any one of those and click on add and it gets added to my quick access toolbar so I've just added one called import access database I'm going to click import Excel spreadsheet click on add I've now got two new commands click on OK and then when I look up here at my quick access toolbar again I can see that I've got two new buttons again they're greyed out but they would be usable to disable those again click on the drop down go into more commands and click on remove click there click on remove and then my toolbar is back to the way I left it with the print icon on it. There is another way of adding a button to the quick access toolbar very quickly. If I hover over a button and right click a little menu comes up and amongst the options on the menu is add to quick access toolbar so if you find there's a particular command that you keep clicking all the time you can add it to the quick access toolbar like that this little right hand right click menu gives you access to customizing the toolbar to moving the toolbar and actually to customizing the ribbon we're going to look at that in a little while but basically you can customize the whole ribbon in a similar way 
so that we can look more closely at some of the features of the ribbon I've created an empty database and in doing that I've enabled some of the buttons on the ribbon. I've selected the home tab on the ribbon and if we look at the sort and filter group on the home tab one of the buttons advanced has got a little drop down to the right if I click on that it shows me a menu of options that are relevant to the advanced button. You may notice that the more button in the next group, the records group, also has a drop down which has different commands in it. The commands always relate to the particular button or function that you've chosen. As I mentioned before, the buttons are arranged into groups and some of the groups have little icons in the bottom right corner like this one which is called a launcher and if I click on the launcher it brings up a dialog box. Dialog boxes typically have a range of options to choose from and normally an OK button and a cancel button or the equivalent sometimes one or two other buttons as well such as an apply button. The OK says whatever changes I've made I want you to implement them and the cancel button says forget that I'm not going to change anything. Within the dialog itself there may be drop downs where I can choose from a range of options such as colour in this case. There may be check boxes where I can choose in this case between showing horizontal grid lines and vertical grid lines and there may be sets of option buttons or radio buttons where clicking on one unclicks another and so on. There can be text to complete and other types of controls such as the types of tabular controls and samples. So the launcher and the dialog box are very common and important features from the ribbon. One other very important feature of Backstage View is that it gives us access to the access options. So if I go into Backstage View by clicking on File and click on Options it brings up a dialog with a number of options to choose from and as we go through the course we're going to be looking at each of these options in more detail. For example there is a General tab and the page of options on the General tab includes the ability to personalize my copy of Office by putting in my name and my initials. One very important option here is Quick Access Toolbar which we saw just now and this is the option that enables us to customize the Quick Access Toolbar. In fact when we did the customization before it basically was a shortcut into this option anyway so we're looking at the same thing access from a different direction. And just above Quick Access Toolbar we have an option for Customize Ribbon. Now we're not going to look into customizing the ribbon in great detail at this point in the course but basically it works a little bit like the quick access toolbar but it's a little bit more complicated with the ribbon because it's not just a matter of selecting a command and adding it we also have on the right the tabs on the ribbon so for instance there's the home tab and the groups of commands within it so for instance text and formatting group has all of these commands in it so we can not only add a command but we can put it in a particular group or we can move the groups around using the buttons down here or we can create new groups ourselves with our own names and put our own buttons in them and so on. This is really outside the scope of what we're covering on this course and so it's something to read up about, look on online, help about and experiment with yourself. The final feature of the Access Workspace that we're going to look at in this section is the Navigation pane. For those of you who've used an earlier version of Access, the Navigation pane replaces the old switchboard. If I click here on the left, I can see the Navigation pane and when I've actually started working on a database it will list in categories all of the objects that are relevant to the creation, maintenance, design etc. of my database. At the moment I've got an empty database so there's very little in it but as I work on the items and objects within the database this navigation pane will start to fill and it will be an easy way of finding my way around my database. 
it too has an entry in the options so if I go into backstage view options and go to the current database tab I have down here a section on navigation which says display navigation pane and then a number of navigation options we're going to look at those options later on so we'll come back to the navigation pane in detail and as we go through creation of a database and starting to put various objects into it we'll start to look in detail at how we use the navigation pane to really help us with building designing and accessing our access databases